Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeep with cool guys. Welcome back to another episode of Jeep with Cool Guy. I've already done this video. Rear brakes, drum brakes on the AMC 20 CJ7 from 78 until 86. The 76 and the 77s had a larger rear brake drum to them. I think it was an 11 inch and for the 78 through 86 it's a 10 inch brake drum. In the previous video that I had done for this I forgot to show how to hook up the parking brake and I got the brake shoes wrong in their orientation. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna redo this without the wheel hub on so we can see everything real easily. And we're gonna try and make this really quick. I also wanna mention that this is, again, for the AMC 20. Uh, late, maybe mid-year for the 86s, they ran out of the AMC 20s because AMC knew that they were going out of business and they were getting ready to sell the brand and they were trying to get through all the supplies that they had. So instead of making more AMC 20s, they put the Dana 44s on the back. I don't have any idea about the Dana 44s. If you do have a question, reach out, put it in the comments, and I will try and answer your question as much as I can. All right, first things first, get yourself some brake lubricant and put it on the contact points on the backer plate. This is where the brake shoes are going to rub the most as they move around, shift in and out. And then you also want to put it on the pin that the springs, the shoe springs, are going to go on just to make it easy to slide and move around. Just try to put it places anywhere that friction is going to build up. You can also put it on the inside of the tongues for the wheel cylinder pistons. Now let's install the parking brake. So this parking brake cable there's three prongs on the end of this cable that go through the hole in the backer plate and that's what keeps it from pulling back out. But the problem with it is is that if you've already got this installed with your adjusting arm underneath the, the body where this connects and goes up to your parking brake lever inside of the cab, then there's too much tension on this spring. So you have to disconnect the other end of this from the adjusting arm with the parking brake cable. Once you get that uh, cable released, you can see I've got all this play in the cable now. Perfect. So slide it in through the slot, the hole in the back of the backer plate, all the way through to where those three prongs catch. Take a small screwdriver, make sure you bend those prongs out so that they don't go back into the plate and release your parking brake cable. And now you've got a whole bunch of room to play here. Now the thing that I failed on with the first video was accurately showing you which one of the brake shoes go where because there actually is a difference. Between the two brake shoes, the back brake shoe or the one that the parking brake actually connects to is taller than the front brake shoe. So if you compare them side by side, you'll see that the back brake shoe is about an inch or so taller and has more material to the, the shoe than the front one. You can kind of see it from the side there. That's the difference between the two. So back shoe has much more material to it and it has a, more, a fuller pad on it. So you want to take your back brake shoe, you want to take your parking brake lever that goes through the hole at the very top. And there should be a little shoehorn washer clamp that slides right in on the groove of that. There, we're good. Now attach your cable to the lever. And you'll notice that the bottom part of the emergency brake lever has a slot cut into it. That cable fits right into that slot with the crimp nut behind the lever and the spring to the front of it. Then you're going to want to take your brake pin. My brake kit came with four of these, two longer, two shorter. I chose the two shorter ones. You're going to put that in through the back of the plate and then you're going to put the brake shoe, the hole, right in the middle of it 
get the top part of the brake into the wheel cylinder piston. Then take your cup, put that over the top of that pin, take the spring over the top of that cup, take the other cup, put it over the top of that, then take your cup press, push it in with holding the pin from the rear and rotate it till the pin goes through that slot in the cup. Just like that. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of give on this. Don't worry about this because once you actually hook the uh, parking cable back up with the adjusting arm, this will draw tight. Now you want to install your guide plate and your adjusting arm cable. I have mine to where the, the crimp is facing to the outside. I just kind of figured that if I had it facing to the inside, it was going to rub on this guide plate and I'd prefer for that not to happen. Next, take either one of the yellow springs. They're identical, so it doesn't really make a difference whether they go to the front or the back. Then you want to take your cable pivot arm, put the spring in through that, and then into this hole on the plate. It seems kind of counterintuitive that it would go in like that, but that's really how it's designed to go. So this is going to turn, go around here like this, and then you're going to want to take your spring tool. This is the one that has the cupped end to it. Put it over the top of the pin, and just slide it into place. And that ultimately holds this cable into place. Then you want to take, you want to make sure that this cable is around the outer groove in this pivot arm. Next, take your front brake shoe and do the exact same thing with the pin and the springs. All right. Now the front shoe is installed. Make sure it's set in the piston pin groove and behind this uh, top guide plate. Then you want to take your parking brake lever strut and this, you have to take note of which end uh, goes where. So the one that has, I guess you oh, it's like an alligator kind of head. This takes the blue spring with this little uh, loop in it. The loop goes to the bottom part of this cutout on the front brake shoe and this part fits right into the slot on the, the emergency brake lever. So slide that in there and then you want to slide this into here so you're gonna, you're gonna have to pull the brake shoe out just a little bit to get it to slide in there and make sure that that loop goes over that tongue on the bottom part of the brake. Now you want to take your other shoe spring, insert it into the hole, second one down. You know, probably want to hold the brake shoe into place because it's going to have a tendency to want to kind of pop out. Up and over, and now we've got that set. So you want to make sure that, and I just did this wrong, I've got the brake shoe did not sit inside of that lever. So that's something to look out for. All right, took a little bit of finagling, but I got the thing set back in there. I had to pull with a little bit of force the top part of the brake shoe so that I could slide this back into place. Now let's move on to the bottom part of the brake assembly. This consists of three pieces. The adjusting lever, the adjusting spring, and the adjusting screw. The adjusting screw is actually composed of three pieces. It's this one, it's the end pin that just slides on this adjusting notch, which threads into the other end of the adjusting arm. So as you unscrew this, it pushes the brake shoes apart, but I would recommend taking this apart and greasing up all the stuff on the inside of this thing so it moves fairly easily and never locks up. Take the spring and the adjusting lever, take the hole in the adjusting lever. Oh, real quick, 
These adjusting levers are marked with what side they're supposed to go on. This one's marked with an R for right. Fascinating. Take that cable, making sure that the cable is inside of the groove of this pivot arm, and insert that, that hook into the top hole of this lever. Then you want to take the shorter curved end of the spring, put that into the bottom hole of the front brake shoe, and then connect those two together. And then you're going to want to pull this over and take this slot or notch bent end of the adjusting arm and put that into the lower hole on the back part of the brake shoe. Then take your adjusting screw, make sure you've got this thing threaded all the way in, and then you're going to want to slide this bottom tongue cut out on the front and the back brake shoe into these grooves in your adjusting screw. The adjusting screw you want to make sure is lined up with the, the adjusting arm just like that because in the other video when I show you how to adjust your parking brake this is what adjusts the the span of the brake shoes. Okay, got it all put back together. Cool, and we did it quickly. Since we did all of this with the wheel hub off, because I had to replace some things on the axle, I'm gonna go put the uh, wheel hub on. I have a video of this on how to install the wheel hub, the rear wheel hub on, on the AMC 20 for the two-piece axles. So if you wanna see how to do that, torque specs and all those other things, pay attention to that video. I'm gonna go put this on right now, and then we'll finish up with the brake drum. All right, that was fun. You have to get this thing down to 250 foot-pounds. I don't even have a torque wrench that goes up that high, so you have to guess on it. Brake drum. There's three extra holes in here, and if you were to take the brake drum off initially, or if you would taken it to some place and they put these retaining screws back in there, I don't know why they would, but some places do. Make sure that you get your brake drum to align to those three holes. You can put these screws back in here if you want, but it's, they're such a pain in the butt. I had to drill these things out to be able to pull out the axle hub because all three of them snapped out. It's just not fun. It's not worth the effort. Get your brake drum on, and then you want to put your wheel on. Torque these down to 90 foot-pounds, your lug nuts, and you're good to go. Well, there you have it, folks. Hopefully a fairly quick video on how to replace the drum brakes on your AMC 20. And I hope I covered everything this time, and unlike the other attempt when I failed miserably. So, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll answer as fast as I possibly can. Again, AMC 20 rear drum brakes for the 10 inch, 10 and a half inch drum brakes, the 78 or the 76, 77 have 11 inch drum brakes and I have no idea about the Dana 44. Under any circumstances, like and subscribe. It just makes me feel better about myself. Not really, but it does help out the Jeep community.